I'm a preventive medicine doc where I look at all the diseases in one patient and how to prevent them. Looking at disease metabolism precursors and helping people figure out how to not get the diseases. The other role I've played as a researcher and epidemiologist, epidemiologists look at one disease, big populations of people. It's more like wholesale medicine. You know, in Hopkins, they used to call it denominator medicine. In other words, you're not looking at the top of the ratio, you're looking at the bottom. You're saying, how many people are in this whole population? How can we decrease that numerator, that number on top? So, the reason I got into all of that is this this is going to become um, something analogous to a childhood disease. Now, what do I mean by that? Do I mean that all the kids are going to get it? That's not exactly what I'm talking about. Epidemiologically speaking, what does an epidemiologist mean by a childhood disease? An epidemiologist, when he or she is referring to a childhood disease, is referring to something that's so infectious. The R naught, you remember that? R naught is high. It's like two, three, or above. Well, the original alpha variant of COVID was three. We talked about that multiple times. If you look at the Delta variant, the evidence is that it is far more contagious than the Alpha variant, which was very contagious to start with, on the order of what, an R naught of five to 10? That's about equivalent to chicken pox. Now it's not quite yet at what, 13 to 15, which would be measles. So, I mean, you hear all these numbers with these R naughts, three to 15 or above, and they're all what we think of, you know, mumps, measles, chicken pox. Why is that? Well, again, if it's that contagious, you're not gonna live very long without being exposed to it. And guess what? The vast majority of the human population is going to get exposed to it very, very quickly. So it hasn't been around in the world, in our population. You know, those people that say, oh gosh, this has been around forever and we didn't know it. Oh, that's not true. Now, that's just silly. If it'd been around forever, as infectious as it is, we'd have been exposed to it very rapidly. Like, you know, that's why it's moving around so quickly. So again, it's going to become something that either, you know, you'll get into the arguments that you already have with the childhood diseases and the vaxxers and the anti-vaxxers there, but that's what's gonna happen. It's not gonna go away, just like measles and chicken pox and mumps didn't just go away. Thank you very much. I think that was a great opportunity to go down a little bunny hole. E.T. himself, vaxxers have been around since the 1700s. That's exactly right. It was Edward Jenner with the cowpox vaccine. I mean, we covered this in a video a while back. Originally, what he and some other people had noticed was people that died of smallpox or had had smallpox and survived it, if they got a little bit of that smallpox infectious material and scraped it onto the skin of others, if they survived that episode, then they tended to be immune to it when the next time it came around. Well, I think it was Jenner that discovered there's a variant of smallpox and it was called cowpox. And if people got exposed to cowpox, they tended to not get smallpox when it came around. So the birth of the vaccination era. For the anti-vaxxers that are wanting to hate on me, and I'm sure we're going to get some of those comments, you're saying, well, Brewer, you don't understand. It's full of, I think it's thimerosal, you know, mercury and all that stuff. And Brewer, you, you just don't understand. I've been there. I understand. Here's another thing. I am not saying that vaccines are harmless. Getting in an airplane is not harmless. People have died getting in an airplane. People die every day getting in cars. So I think it was a Hogo cartoon where he said, you pays your money, you takes your licks. In other words, we all in our lives are presented with a, a series of choices. I have some family members who are interested in, I think it's Jimmy Kimmel, and they sent me a, one of his cartoon memes, and he was talking about evidently an alcohol company and a Red Bull type company and somebody else are getting together to combine alcohol and caffeine in a big, big way. And there's gonna be a lot of people that go for it. My understanding is that's already a thing. I know I see it. You talk about kids. I know kids who like to combine alcohol and caffeine and put that in their body. It's dangerous to do that in case you don't know. And so we all have our choices on what we put in our body. And like Pogo said, you pay your money, you take your chances. Winning is exciting, but you know what? What you're winning matters even more. How about the chance to win another couple of decades of life, healthy life, understanding the cause of heart attack, stroke, dementia, the major killers and disablers, and how to prevent those. You can win these courses to do just that. How do you do that? Click the link below, watch the video, answer the questions, and the more you answer right, the better your chances of winning. Give it a try.
When things like free courses, they can save your life.